Okay, so let's talk a bit about partnership changes. Now, whenever there will be a change in the partnership agreement, so let's say we've, we've seen a case when a new partner is coming in, but let's say we could also have a situation where a partner could exit the business. But in this case, one thing that needs to be accounted for, there can be some unrealized gains and losses on your assets. Now, what do I mean by unrealized gain? So let's say there were two partners, A and B, and they both started the business with their capital. Now they use their money to buy some land. So let's say they bought some land and we can say the value of this land was $100,000. All right, so they bought some land that was worth $100,000. Okay, now let's say a year later, a new partner wants to join in. Now at that time, the value of the land has gone up from 100,000 and it's now worth $150,000. That's the new value of this land. But I would say this gain on the, on the value of land, which rose from 100,000 to 150,000, this unrealized gain of $50,000, Right? So you can say this unrealized gain of $50,000 belongs to partner A and B because they invested their money and, and they should get this gain, not the new partner coming in. Similarly, we could have a scenario where there was partner A, B and C and let's say they invested in a land together but now, now partner C wants to leave the business. So partner C would obviously ask for the increase or any gain in the value of land that was incurred. Similarly, if there was a loss, then partner C should also pay the share of the loss. So whenever there will be a structural change in the partnership, we also need to look for any unrealized profits and losses that must be attributed in this period. All right, so these profits and losses should be first recorded in the partner's capital account so that partners can be respectively rewarded or they can also be penalized for any loss that has occurred in this period. Okay, but the important thing to note over here is that these gains and losses will go to the existing partners, the partners who are running the business. So old partners will revalue their assets and any liabilities as well before there is a partnership change so that existing partners can be rewarded for their efforts in building up this business. All right, so we will draw a separate revaluation, which I will show in the next slide, but we should remember these two steps. Step one, if there's any gain, we will credit it in the revaluation account. Let me explain that as well. So if the value of your asset has increased, I can say that asset should be debit because the value of your asset has gone up. And this gain should be transferred to the revaluation account, which will be credit in this case. Similarly, if there is a loss, we should credit the asset account because, because the value of the asset has gone down and we will transfer this loss to the revaluation account. Okay, so your revaluation account should look something like this. So all gains will be transferred to the revaluation account on the credit side. So you, you, so you can remember the credit side is the gain side, whereas all losses will be transferred to the debit side of the revaluation account. So transfer the gains to the credit side, transfer the losses to the debit side. After that, we need to calculate the net gain or loss. So your net gain or loss should look something like this, right? So if there is a net gain, the balancing figure will come on the debit side because the gain side is heavier than the loss side. So your net gain will come over here. However, if the loss side is heavier, you will have a net loss that should come on the credit side as the balancing figure. So, so the purpose of drawing this revaluation account is to reward the existing partners or to penalize the existing partners with any change in the value of your assets. So in the next video, I will solve a question where we will also come across some revaluation of assets and liabilities and our job would be to transfer this gain or loss to the partner's capital account. I will show that in the next video.